Today, the focus will be on the performance of the Nigerian equities market, that is the Niger exchange, in the first half of 2024. And I believe we have some statistics that we should display on the screen that according to statistics, the All Share Index, which is the broad index that measures the performance of the Nigerian stocks, opened the trading half of the year in the month of January, as you can see displayed right there at 74,773.77. That is the All Share Index that we started the year with. And we also did see uh, the market, you know, I go through a tumultuous time, I must say. However, we did see the market end uh, the month of June with the All Share Index at 100,000 and 57.49. And that goes to show, you know, that the markets gained about 25,000 283.72 basis point, or you can say the markets gained about 33.81% uh, in the past six months. And just as you can see also displayed on your screen, we also did see that the market capitalization gained also having started the month of January at 40.917 trillion naira. And also we did see the market capitalization and the first half of 2024, that is, end the month of June 2024 at 56.601 trillion naira, going to show that the Nigeria exchange also had gained, talking about the market capitalization at end uh, about 15.684 trillion uh, naira. And I have stated earlier that this is not to say that the market didn't have, you know, a tumultuous time. However, good to see that certain level of gains were recorded within the NGX. And joining me now to discuss, you know, the growth that has been recorded, that is over 33.81% uh, for the first half of 2024 recorded by the Niger Exchange. I'm joined now by my guest who is an investment analyst, Akolade Taufik. Thank you for joining us on Business Daily this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Chamaka. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Mr. Kolade, for coming on the program. You have heard the data. I mean, like they say, data never really lies. Uh, the Nigeria Exchange has had a very tumultuous uh, month or year, I should say, the past six months. So many policy, you know, introductions. So much really has played out. But good to see that the market ended having gained about 33.81% in the first half of 2024 and let us hear from you now how would you assess the performance of the ngx in the past six months uh, thank you very much uh, that is expected the bullish trend we witnessed in the market is expected uh, because uh, what we have seen in our market we notice that we've seen a kind of a renewed bad interest uh, from the domestic investors which is a combination of a uh, high net worth individuals and then the retail investors, and a couple with the activities of uh, the institutional investors. We are also beginning to see a uh, renewed bad interest for the borrowing portfolio investors uh, starting from the month of February. If you look at the data from the month of February, we've seen increased participation from the borrowing portfolio investors. By the time you look at all these factors together, uh, they were actually responsible uh, for the bullish trend and the positive trend we have seen in our market in the last six months. So we are also expecting more to happen in the second half of the year. You have referenced, you know, the, the, the introduction, I should say, or investors' confidence increase, especially uh, after the month of February. But what would you say is the major reason that drove the, you know, renewed investors' confidence that the markets witnessed? Okay, if you look at the results being posted by most of the companies, especially the banks, in the, that's the financial year of 2023, uh, the results turned out to be very good. We've seen good different declaration from the Fugas, that's the, the, the top banking stock of this country, the GTB, the Assets Bank, the UBA. If you look at the, uh, what they have declared in terms of dividends, they have been very impressive. We have also seen the strong performance from the companies, that's the banks, and if you other companies that have the year of December, they also turn out to be very good. So these are the things 
uh, that really serve as catalyst to the market, and that is what actually uh, brought renewed bank interest into into the market because investors wanted a good return from their investment. And once that is established in the market, you see a lot of funds coming into the equities market. That is exactly what happened in the equities market in the first half year of 2024. Okay, you have referenced the performance of banks specifically. You mentioned the Fugas uh, banks, that is the First Bank, the UBA Bank, the GT Bank, the United Bank for Africa and Zenith Bank. But would you say that the recapitalization policy played a role in, you know, the performance of the banking sector and the earnings reports that, okay, we saw earnings report as well, but would you say the recapitalization policy uh, played a role in the success or the growth recorded by the banking sector? Uh, yes, it's also, it's also, uh led to that performance in the banking industry because the capitalization exercise we also increase the market capitalization of the banks and then it will also give them more fund for them to be able to do business don't forget the banking business is a loan and advances and then they also have other uh, sources of income but the loan and advances is the core business banking of the banks so the capitalization exercise will help the bank and then if you look at what happened in 2020 in year 2023 and 2025 uh, when the CBM uh, mandated all the commercial banks. At that time, it was more of a consolidation and recapitalization. And we're able to they limited the banks in our country to almost 25%. And since that time, we've seen performance in our banking industry. So you hardly see a banking a failure or banking crisis since that capitalization. So investors also believe that this exercise is going to improve the performance of the bank, and then it also present, uh, prevent a systemic failure, and the banks will be uh, they will also have more uh, fund for them to be able to compute for uh, more businesses, both locally and internationally. Well said. I have been speaking with Akola De Taufik, who is the head equities team, equity sales team at Lead Capital. But he will be on standby as the conversation will continue right after the break. Do stay. And you're still watching Business Daily coming to you live on Trust TV. And just before the break, we started a conversation on the performance of the Nigeria exchange that is the Nigerian equities market in the first half of 2024, with the OSHA index having recorded growth of over 33%. And I still have my guest right here with me. He is Akolade Taufik. He is the head of equities at Lead Capital. Thank you, Mr. Akolade, for coming on Business Daily. Thank you for having me. Okay, just before the break, you made reference to, you know, the company's earnings reports that we did see from diverse companies, which ended up impacting on the performance of the market in the positive way. Moving forward, do you expect to see more positive company earnings reports again for the first half of 2024? And what do you expect or how do you expect for these reports to impact on the performance of the NGX in the second half of the year? Uh, thank you. Uh, we are also expecting uh, uh, what we have seen in the first uh, quarter of 2024, especially in the banks, to also play it out. By the time we see the second quarter results from the uh, major uh, index, which is the banking index, we are expecting that to also serve as a catalyst to the markets uh, because the performance in the Q1 from the banks has been very, very impressive. So except the companies that are, are facing problem of macroeconomic problem, the those in consumer uh, sectors of our market. But for the banks and insurance, uh, we is, the market is expecting a positive uh, uh, performance from those securities under uh, those two major indices, the banking and insurance, even in a Greek, from what we have seen in the Q1. So the second quarter result or the actual result of the banking, insurance, and the Greek sector, we are also expecting it to be also to impact positively in the market, as we witnessed in the first quarter of 2024. Okay, let us touch on, you know, the listings that we saw, or listings and the listing that we saw in the first half of the year. We saw quite a number. One of the major ones was obviously uh, Transcorp Power. How would you say that impacted, you know, on the performance of power stocks and power, um, the power sector as a whole in the first half of the year? Okay, thank you. Uh, 
uh, we can if you look at the listing and the listing from the markets uh, in terms of looking at the market performance you cannot actually use the capitalization that's the listing and the listing to determine or to adjudge the performance of the market uh, what we usually use as a key barometer is the ASI. of course we saw some listing in the market the power that's the transport power of course it's going to increase capitalization of the ngs as a whole and then it will also increase capitalization of the world, of the uh, power sector or uh, the industrial segment of the market. But that will definitely do to the market is that it will give investors who are also willing to diversify their investment rather than taking position in equity in banking stock insurance. So they have flavor of other stock. So that is what that will do to the market. So those who have been uh, anticipating the listing of the power company in the market, they have options and they have opportunity to invest in the power. But give and takes that will also increase market capitalization and it also increase the all share in this when we see uh, interest buy interest in that company in, in, in the in the power uh, listing companies well said mr taufik you have touched briefly on the sectors that you expect will have you know a relatively good performance in the second quarter you touched on the banking sector you also did touch on the insurance sector but i'd like for us to touch on you know sectors that you expect will have some challenges or struggles uh, moving forward what would those sectors be uh, those sectors are not perfect the uh, the industrial sector and then the consumer sectors those two uh, indices uh, they will still continue to face a macro economics headlong because uh, the result we have seen from those companies from those sectors in the first half even the final year result of 2023 were not very impressive because uh, because of fs loss they also recorded so until we begin to see moderation in inflation and the volume exchange uh, market that is the time those companies will begin uh, to recover from the FS losses. But currently, uh, the consumer sector and then and, uh, industrial sectors, they will continue to face uh, FS challenges because they are, they are still depending on the foreign uh, source of raw materials. So those two se se segments of the market, the uh, consumer and industrial, they will face the challenges of foreign exchange uh, losses. You have touched Compared on to what the elephant in the, the room, the that is inflation. Company, uh, fortunately, uh, we, we have seen in terms of quite performance. a number of measures by the CBN to tighten inflation and nip it in the board. However, we haven't started to see the results of the policies so far by the CBN. But how do you think the CBN's approach to combating inflation will shape the market trends in the second half of the year? Uh, what? Uh, the CBN, if you look at the current rate of inflation, we are still at 3.69%, that's as at May. Uh, and if you look at the inflation, though it's increasing at a decreasing rate, when you compare to what we have, uh, the CBN policy is necessary, but it's not sufficient. We are also expecting more uh, action plan and more policy that will come out from the CBN, to, uh, from the physical authority to complement the effort of central bank. But uh, in the medium long term, Inflation is going to moderate, and then we begin to see moderation or a uh, fixed income market also coming to equilibrium. Uh, but for now, uh, that measure or approach by the central bank is not sufficient. We need to see more uh, uh, collaborative uh, uh, effort or policy from the uh, fiscal authority. And we are, we've also seen government, I mean, the president uh, passing executive order to bring the price of, uh, to remove excise duty on the plants or manufacturing and equipment for the pharmaceutical industry. We believe if those things come to play, uh, it's going to help the, that sector and then inflation will begin to moderate to the lowest well, level. We'll, of we'll course, not to the single digit, but it will also uh, begin to moderate. When interest rate begins to moderate, we we'll begin to see more fund movements to the equities uh, market. Medium to long term. But let us talk to issues around, you know, challenges that have impacted company earnings report. Uh, like you stated earlier, we saw quite a number of positive reports, but we also did see um, reports that were not so encouraging. And most of this report had, you know, the problem of FX losses and uh, 
um, challenges around Forex specifically. So I would like for us to talk to, you know, companies that incur substantial FX losses in the past year. Will these by any means, or in the past uh, first half of the year, will this by any means impact their performance now going forward the second half of the year? And yes, it will also have impact on their second quarter until we begin to see action plan and policy from those companies that is going to impact on their performance in the medium long term. Because we haven't actually seen action uh, plan coming out from those companies as to how they are going to navigate the volume exchange challenges they are having. So until that begins to come into the market, like uh, investment in backward integration as did by some other companies, if they haven't actually told that part, uh, they will still continue to record uh, losses in their balance sheets. So until they are able to navigate those areas and the way to leverage on not too dependent on volume raw materials, in the absence of that, uh, their results will continue uh, to not be in a good uh, shape. And then what, what that will do to the price of those stock in the market is that you see an invest, investor uh, looking X way, and then uh, the price of this stock in the market will close flat or remain stagnant over time. Mm. What are your expectations for the future of you know the fixed income market? What do you expect will play out in the market in the second half of the year? Uh, over time, uh, we are likely to see as in inflation begins to moderate. If as inflation begins to moderate over time, uh, we are likely to see. A, a fixed income a market coming to equilibrium because uh, the CBN over time will also uh, need to slow the rate at which they are hiking rates uh, because it's imparting, uh, it's, it's really uh, improving activities in the fixed income market. So once inflation begins to moderate with uh, CBN policy, with uh, effort, we are, also, we are likely to see from the uh, fiscal authority, Federal Minister of Finance, they begin to impart on the inflation. CBN is going to reduce the rates on the NPR. They are going to reduce the NPR. Once they re reduce the NPR, a fixed income instrument will come to equilibrium. And then you are likely to see fund movement to the equities market over time. Because what is really driving the fixed income market now is because of the hike in the NPR, mm. because central bank wants to use the NPR to curtail inflation. Once inflation begins to moderate in the medium long term, a uh, fixed income market will come to equilibrium. But uh, the interest rate in the fixed income market may not come to a single digit because inflation is not likely to come to the single digit in the short term, but in the medium uh, long term. That is expected. You have touched on, you know, interest rate, and it's no news that we are currently in a higher interest rate environment. But seeing, you know, how the fixed income market has performed in recent times, do you still anticipate that continued shift of investor preference towards the fixed income market, at least until inflation starts to, you know, deflate and uh, the interest rate, like you rightly mentioned, is reduced by the Central Bank of Nigeria? Uh, yes, we'll continue to see uh, more patronage around uh, fixed income instruments uh, until the big CBM begin to moderate NPR to curtail inflation. But for now, we'll continue to see a fund movement to the fixed income uh, instrument because it's very attractive. We are seeing 17, 18%, 20, 21% in the fixed income market. So that is likely to play out in the short term. Some analysts have spoken towards, you know, the expectations of a bearish sentiment in the market in the second half with, you know, um, narratives around the focus on primary market activities. Do you agree with this outlook, talking about the bearish sentiment uh, for the NGX in the second half? Well, I don't belong to that school of thought. Uh, I don't expect markets uh, to also... Uh, travel on a bearish note in the second half. Uh, because we've seen that the second half is going to be dominated by activities from the right issue and a public offering from the banks because of the recapitalization exercise. And as such, by the time those recapitalization exercises are concluded, the right issue and public offering, they will also be listed in our markets. And when they are listed in our markets, it will increase the capital base 
of the NGS as a whole, and it also increased the banking index. And the fund being realized from the public offering and the, pop and the right issue by the commercial banks, we also give them opportunity to have more money to grant as known and advances. And it will turn out to improve on their earnings and performance. And as soon as we begin to see the impacts of those capital raising in the Q4 of 2023, you are likely to see the more bad interest in those banking stock. And that will definitely increase activities in our market. So I don't expect, I don't foresee very strength uh, playing out in the second half of the year. Of course, the second half of the year will be dominated by uh, capital raising, but that will also impact uh, positively in our market. We're also expecting to close the second half of the year on a positive note as well. Well, we keep our fingers crossed and expect, like you've rightly stated, to see, you know, the bullish trend continue in the second half of the year. You have re-emphasized the need for a collaborative effort between, you know, the monetary side of government and the fiscal side of government. But let us hear from you now. What specific measures are you expecting to see from both sides? Well, uh, the CBN, they have done their best by using the MPR, which is the uh, usual approach being adopted by major economies of the world. But uh, if you look at what is really causing inflation in Nigeria, our inflation, there are so many other factors that are responsible for the inflation. So the government needs to improve on security so that when they improve on security, I mean, a farmer can go to the farm to go and farm. That's number one. And then number two, there is need from the government, that's the, uh, the fiscal authority, to also increase on our oil production, they need to do more investment in our oil and gas sector. So that by, that by the time a lot of money is being invested in oil and gas, uh, we're also expecting that uh, it's going to increase our production because we are still not meeting our quota system as a member of OPEC, meaning that we're under producing. And then the market is there for us. If we can uh, improve on our production, it will give us more revenue. And then if they can also pass more executive order to address uh, inflation problems like the one they said about the executive order on the pharmaceutical. Uh, by the time those collaborative efforts uh, are put in place, I believe strongly that uh, inflation is going to moderate in the uh, as expected, and then we are likely to see uh, prices of commodity uh, moderating back to uh, affordable uh, affordable level. But as of now, uh, the effort of the central bank is not sufficient. Though necessary but uh, more collaborative policy and effort is required from the uh, physical authority. If those things are being put in place, I believe over time, inflation will begin to moderate and we are going to see the impact in our market and our economy generally. Well said, Mr. Kolade, calling for collaborative efforts between the monetary side of government and the fiscal side. But I'd like for us to touch on, you know, forex stability. We have seen quite a number of efforts as well from the Central Bank of Nigeria trying to, you know, unify rates and ensure that the Naira can stand tall amongst, you know, foreign currency. But seeing all that has played out so far and the Naira not doing or doing fairly well even at the end of the second quarter of the year. What are your expectations and predictions, you know, uh, towards ensuring increased stability and reduced volatility in the FX market? Okay. Uh, if you, at least, what we have seen is uh, compared to where we are coming from, we've seen some kind of stability. Even though for us to know whether that we've seen uh, real stability, at least we have to look at that within the six, period of six and 12 months. Uh, but if government continue on this uh, trajectory, the effort they are putting in place in the FX market, uh, we believe over time the market is going to be stable. And uh, just like I said, in the, we, 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 have, we have also seen uh, increased participation from the volume portfolio investor uh, starting from the month of February. If there is stability in the volume exchange market, we are expecting more funds into Nigeria, both in form of a volume direct investment and a volume portfolio uh, investment. So if they can continue uh, uh, improving supply, because the challenge we have in FX market is about supply and demand distortion. If central bank can increase supply, how do we increase supply? That thing goes down what I've said about increasing oil production. How various sorts of uh, dollars a volume exchange earnings, we need to improve upon those areas so that we can earn more 
money in form of borrowing earnings. And then that will help us uh, to increase supply to the volume exchange market and we'll, we are going to see moderation if we, we can increase supply and that will definitely impact on our market and our economy generally uh, we would like for you to speak towards the recent directive by the central bank of nigeria still on ensuring that we have some form of stability in the forex market where the cbn released the directive last week asking uh, financial institutions, commercial banks, as well as, you know, uh, money deposit banks uh, to rather give out uh, monies in Naira rather than foreign exchange, rather than uh, foreign currency. But what are your thoughts on this uh, directive by the CBN? And how do you foresee this playing out in the short to medium term? Uh, well, everything still goes down to a uh, problem of supply. Uh, because... Uh, to me, a central bank, they are still using that tools, they are still using those methods because of the challenges of the volume exchange market. We, have. we still don't have enough. They are trying to prevent illegal activities within the system. But to me, uh, that policy, I believe, is going to be, is going to be a short-term policy. Uh, that is not the best for our economy uh, because you cannot actually constrain people uh, from uh, taking money in volume currency. So, but because of we are short supply of the volume currency, we are short supply of the, of the dollar. So, CBN is trying to block all the leakages to ensure that uh, uh, FS is actually going to those who needed it for genuine businesses. So, to me, uh, let's see how it plays out. But it's going to be a short-term measure. The major effort we need to do is to ensure we increase oil production, we increase our earnings. And then we also solve inflation problem. And then all those policies we need to put in place to attract more volume portfolio investors and volume direct investments are put in place. If those is in place, I think those one, they are sufficient policy. All these issues of a stopping ban from exchange, they're just temporary measures. They cannot address our problem. So I think they still need to go back to the drawing board and focus on the main issue rather than using those uh, uh, policy to uh, maintain or to bring stability to the country. It cannot work. It can only work for the short term, but it's not a long term uh, or uh, medium or long term solution. You have re-emphasized the need for increasing supply, you know, increasing capital raising initiatives, increasing foreign direct investment and the likes. But I'd like for you to appraise the current business environment in Nigeria. How attractive would you say or how easy is it to run a, a business in Nigeria? We recently saw Total Energy speak Angola over Nigeria, talking to issues around, you know, policy inconsistency and, you know, even skills and skills acquisition across board but how would you appraise the current business environment in nigeria and how attractive is nigeria in the eyes of foreign investors well uh, it's still it's still very tough where well, we haven't gotten there but i believe over time we'll get there uh, because if you look at uh, uh, most companies we've talked about uh, uh, consumer and industrial companies that uh, they are facing volume exchange problems so and uh, when such things happen what is likely to happen is that you see companies downsizing because they want to cut costs to meet up in terms of increasing their performance so that they will reduce the losses. The business environment has been very tough uh, because inflation is really affecting companies. The cost of materials are, is going up. FS is also not stable. Uh, but be I believe strongly that uh, if governments can also improve on some of these policies they're also bringing out, uh, it's going to improve. But currently, the business environment is very tough, other than the banking insurance and a few uh, sectors, the consumer and the industrial sectors, they have been facing problems. So capital raising is one issue. Look at the cost of borrowing. Now, the cost of borrowing for the corporate uh, bodies now is around 20, 23%, because if central bank uh, treasury bills is given 20, 21%, for any, which is a risk group instrument. So any company that wants to come to the market to raise money, You'll be looking at a uh, higher interest rate. You have to put premium to attract uh, investors. So how do you want to, to operate in an environment where the cost of borrowing is around 25 30%? So the business environment is still very tough. So more needs to be done by the government to bring stability to the volume exchange market. And then inflation also needs to be, to, to, to be brought down. And then the other things like, uh, 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 what do you call it, securities, and all other things that can discourage Burning uh, direct investment in Nigeria need to be addressed. But currently, the business environment is also very tough. From the result we have seen 
from companies that are not even in financial service firm. Thank you. Well, like you've said, we remain optimistic and do hope to see, you know, the right policies being put in place to ensure that Nigeria's business environment is attractive to foreign investors. I have been speaking with the head of equities trading uh, at uh, Lead, Cap Lead, uh, Lead Capital, uh, Kola De Taufik. Thank you for all the insight you've shared with us on today's edition of Business Daily. Thank you very much. Well, this is where we draw the curtains on the program today. Join the conversation on social media and share with us, you know, your, your analysis or your appraisal of the first of the markets, the equities market in the first half of 2024 and your expectations for the second half of the year. Let us hear from you. For now, my name is Chiamaka Nendu. Thank you for watching and bye for now.